In the last decade, the housing market has been called the catalyst that drove the growth of the economy, but also brought about its collapse, and it's now considered one of the biggest obstacles to the recovery. One attempt to fix that was the first-time homebuyer tax credit, but the tax credit may have, in fact, added to the market's troubles. That's at least according to our next guest. Kevin Hassett is a Bloomberg columnist and a director of economic policy studies at the conservative American Enterprise Institute. Kevin, welcome back to Bloomberg. Always good to have you on. Thanks, Mark. Kevin, talk to me about this home buyer tax credit. Did it have its intended effect? Well, it doesn't really look like it. In fact, uh, new home sales dropped to about 500,000 a month right before the credit was introduced. And after the credit was introduced, they never climbed that high again. And so they didn't really lead uh, to a recovery in the housing market by passing this credit. But what they did do is start a whole bunch of fraud. You know, there are thousands and thousands of fraudulent claim we're finding out as we go and look at these audits, including uh, thousands that were claimed by, by people who are in prison and even a few hundred from people on life sentences. And so the government yeah. decided that they should take our money and give it to people to buy homes. Homes, and it didn't really do anything other than sort but, of frustrate us because they took away our money and, and maybe get a few people to do things they shouldn't. Have. But Kevin, is it fair to say <laughs> that some people did benefit and that also in a program of this magnitude, unfortunately, there's bound to be some sort of fraudulent activity? Well, I think that, you know, we can never know exactly who is going to buy a house anyway and who wasn't, you know, and so figuring out exactly how many new homes are, were bought or existing homes were bought because of the credit is going to be very, very difficult, but it's just not looking terrific. And, and the other side of it is that when the credit goes away, well, then, first of all, we're going to have a big drop in new home sales because folks just bought a bunch of houses, you know, through April in order to qualify for the credit. May was the worst month on record going back to the 1960s for new home sales because yeah. the credit disappeared. But now, uh, you know, after uh, September, you won't be able to claim the credit anymore. Now, in that period, people will probably hold off buying new homes thinking, geez, maybe that credit's going to come back. And so I think right. there's going to be a depressing effect now. That kind of roller coaster effect is something that we see with Keynesian I, policies I, all the time. I was going to ask you, because in, in the title mm -hmm. to your column, it says housing gets sick on Keynesian roller coaster. Why a Keynesian roller coaster? What, what are your metrics? What are you seeing? Right. Well, so the basic idea is that the Keynesians think that we should throw government policy at a problem during a recession and then uh, pull it back when we start booming again. But the fact is that the history of policymakers is really, really bad. An academic study that I cite in, in my Bloomberg column today actually concluded that on net, Keynesian policies have made fluctuations worse. And if you look at the housing sector, you can see why. Because what happened was, you know, maybe it caused a little bit of a surge in, in housing, uh, but as soon as we take it away, then there's a collapse since we have the lowest month on record in May. Right. And now maybe they're going to bring it back and there'll be another spike up. But that kind of volatility and uncertainty is not good for the market. Is that how it created the volatility? Yeah, that's right. And I think right now we're, we're seeing it. I think right now people have no idea what's going to happen next in the housing market, but they know that the level, the most recent level that we've seen is the lowest that we've had on record. We've never measured a worse month than May. What about IRS efforts to combat fraud? Has, have those efforts been effective? Well, I guess the fact that we're actually talking about the fraud that they found is a good sign because it means that they've found it. But but don't forget that those checks went out and now we have to try to get the taxpayers money back. And and I don't know exactly, you know, whether we can trust that the guys who are on life sentences and claim the credit didn't already waste the money. Um, Kevin, let me bring up something because my partner Julie mentioned it last week when she was mm -hmm. talking to some guests and we mentioned it earlier. There's this conversation that's going on in, in government capitals around the world. Stimulus versus spending cuts versus austerity measures. Is that a conversation that's being had here in the corridors in Washington? And has it, a con has it been a conversation that anyone's listening to? Well, well, absolutely, it's the conversation right now. And even with the housing credit, there are some people on the Hill who think that we should reintroduce it and make it bigger and have it last longer because the economy is still weak. But others that are saying, geez, you know, really what we're doing is we're just taking money from people who have a house already and giving it to people so that they can go buy one. And, well, and that's driving up housing demand yeah. really in, a, in an economy where we maybe need to let the housing market continue to ramp down and, and because Kev we overbuilt. Kevin, could I ask you in 15 seconds, wasn't that the concern mm -hmm. expressed during after FDR's administration that perhaps they weren't pumping enough stimulus into it and therefore you had a double dip? Well, yeah, or they might have contracted too fast. But don't forget, the Federal Reserve back then was really kooky, and we're not going to make the same mistakes we did back then. All right. Kevin Hassett, Bloomberg columnist, AEI Director of Economic Policy Studies. Always good to have you on, Kevin. Thanks. Thank you.